In our last video, uh, we talked and defined what we meant by cybersecurity. In this video, we want to demystify the entire landscape. And specifically, we want to talk about some of the challenges that face individuals, organizations, and policymakers. Many of us are used to these types of headlines that uh, we find on a regular basis. Things like 77,000 cyber attacks or 7 billion records compromised in the first three quarters of 2017. And these are all really, really scary uh, headlines for us to realize. And we have to sometimes wonder, why do we even get out of bed? Why do we even bother? If things are so bad and we feel that we're about ready to suffer from a cataclysmic fire of of cyber attacks, why do we even bother? And so in order to get a handle on this situation, we need to demystify what we actually mean by a cybersecurity threat and the cybersecurity consequences that come with it. So what do we actually need to be concerned about? This is a fundamental question. It's a fundamental question for us as individuals, for corporate executives, as well as policymakers. And so this is one of the central questions we want to address in this particular course. Well, a lot of it really does depend on the position in which you stand. If you're an individual, there are a series of different questions you may want to ask. What local, state, federal law should be written to protect me? How did cyber attacks impact my privacy? What type of activity does it actually cover? Well, those are fundamentally different questions than if you're a corporation or an organization. They may ask about what types of liability do they specifically have to protect or in the event that, the, uh, that your data is compromised in their network. Can businesses actually hack back? So if they're compromised by a particular threat actor, by a hacker, are they entitled to actually hack back the hacker? That's a good question. Should businesses be compelled to turn over source code of products that they want to introduce into a new foreign market? So in some countries around the world, if you want to do business, you actually have to turn over your source code. Is that something that you want to actually do? If you're a nation state, there are all sorts of other types of questions you're going to have to answer. So is one cyber attack from another country against yours an act of war? Or is it a matter of espionage? How you answer that question will affect the response you have. There might be other questions like, is there a difference in the types of attacks? Are some attacks more severe than others? Are some more exploitive versus disruptive? How do you know? How do you categorize? How do you measure? These are fundamental questions that need to be asked. Should common agreements between nations be used to create what we call norms of behavior, normal behavior? And how should you enforce them? How should countries cooperate or not to assist in criminal investigations? And how do I manage threats to my own critical infrastructure? And you'll notice that depending on whether you're talking about an individual or an organization or a nation state, there are different questions. This is fundamental because oftentimes when we talk about cybersecurity in the popular culture, we tend to only focus around a handful of specific questions. And if you don't disentangle your position on the issue, you're going to ask different questions or you may miss other questions entirely. So it's important that we start to define where we sit. So from a policymaker's point of view, the goal of the policymaker is to take advantage of beneficial aspects of technology while minimizing security risks. And so what we talk about here is that a policymaker who wants to make sure that they're adopting all the technology and all the wonderful benefits that it affords has to make sure that while they adopt that particular set of technology, that they're minimizing the risk that it poses to broader society. So there's a whole set of technologies that are being introduced in our cities, in our critical infrastructure, things like our power systems, our water systems, surface transport systems. And the reason we're introducing all that technology is to make it more efficient. We all like being able to, you know, hail a ride from our Uber app. We all like to make sure that we understand how much power we're using 
on a regular basis. All of these things require technology. But how do policymakers know that if they're putting in that particular set of technology, that they're minimizing the risk and they're not making things potentially worse for themselves? This is a question, and this is a question that policymakers need to solve. So some broad areas of concern that policymakers may have might be things like the confidentiality or integrity or accessibility of government networks, making sure that the government networks that they use to provide services to the citizens are actually uh, not compromised and that are maintaining the confidentiality, integrity, and accessibility. We need to make sure that we understand what the impact is to important civil services like power and water systems. And we also need to make sure that we have a broad set of national and international concerns. So these are areas that policymakers want to focus on when it comes to cybersecurity. So some examples of cyber policy. And these are just you know, some very, very specific examples to highlight how policymakers are actually trying to address some of these broad areas of concern. Might include you know, some examples of statutes or laws would be things like the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act or the Federal Information Security Management Act or known as FISMA. They also include things like executive orders or policy directives. These are things that stem from the executive branch. Things like PPD-41 and PPD-21. It's kind of mouthful uh, you know, of uh, acronyms that are, that are a little bit of a mouthful. But help us deal with how the executive plans on, the executive branch plans on addressing certain cybersecurity concerns. Like, how do we coordinate a national response to cyber attack? When should we actually respond to a cyber attack as a country? Because if you hit Joe's Crab Shack, that's probably a little different than hitting an electric utility company. There's a differentiation that needs to be made. It might also include regulations. So uh, an example might be the National Do Not Call Registry. That's not a law and it's not an executive order, but it is an example of policy that, is, uh, uh, that might be relevant in this case. It might include things like frameworks, voluntary frameworks, the way that we operate uh, you know, in, in, in addressing certain best practices to improve cybersecurity. Things like the NIST standard cybersecurity standard framework or the ODNI cyber threat framework. Or finally, it might be something as simple as a presidential speech. When the president makes comments, it is policy. And so these are examples of cybersecurity policy that are relevant to the broad areas of concern. So in this video, what we've tried to address is trying to disentangle what are the areas of concern for the policymakers and to identify that cybersecurity and your perceptions of cybersecurity are really dictated based on the position in which you hold. Are you talking about cybersecurity issues from an individual standpoint, a business or organizational standpoint, or from a nation state? In our next video, we're going to explore what we call the threat landscape, the broad in areas of, uh, that we need to address if we're going to better understand what we mean by cybersecurity. See you next time.